so i found this beautiful beautiful top on pinterest the pink one and i decided to recreate it but with a twist i decided to add some elements from flora from wings club's top and this is what i came up with so here's the tutorial okay so i have my fabric folded over and the first thing that i'm going to do is to cut the back of the top so usually for most tops like this i would put a zipper at the center back which means there'll be a zipper allowance right here because this folded edge is going to fall at the center of the back but i'm thinking about putting a side zipper on this one just because i don't want i don't want the zipper at the back so there is not going to be a zipper allowance here i'm just going to have like a plain you know a plain back so um also the top doesn't have it's kind of off shoulder ish like the 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 body of the top itself doesn't have like that shoulder area and then the sleeves have that elastic that you can pull up so because of that we're going to like instead of starting from one when measuring all of the vertical measurements when taking all of the vertical measurements like the length of the back i would start at four and a half so this is because this is going to account for that shoulder area that this top doesn't have right so starting from there i'm going to mark the full length of my top and of course this depends on you if you're going for a crop top then you measure your desired length whatever the, that may be so i'm just going to go ahead and mark that the next stop we're going to come up here which is the shoulder area the top area anyway and we're going to measure half of your shoulder to shoulder measurement so you're just going to mark that i actually am taking away one inch from my shoulder to shoulder measurement just because in most of these um shoulderless tops if you use your exact shoulder measurements at this part it might be a bit baggy so i'm taking out maybe three quarters of an inch just to like get it to be a bit more fitted right and then i'm going to mark my armhole i remember I'm doing like I'm not starting from the top of my measuring tape. I'm starting from here from four and a half. And then on that line right there, I'm going to mark my bust measurement divided by four and then add an inch for sewing allowance. Next up, I'm going to mark my waistline. So just that um, the distance between your shoulder and your waist. So this is going to be the center point of my darts and this is also going to be where i measure my waist divided by four plus an inch for sewing allowance and then another inch for my darts this is because i'm putting darts at the back if you don't want to do the darts then you can go without that but i would definitely recommend doing darts just to like really make it fit to your body properly and then at the hem, I'm going to be measuring wherever the length falls, the length that you choose for your top, you measure the circumference of that area. So if, for instance, you're going for like a crop top that stops around your waist, then of course, this is where your top ends. But if you're going to go lower, wherever that length that you want stops, then you take the circumference of that area. And that is how you get what you're supposed to use here. So I'm going to use that measurement divided by four plus an inch for sewing allowance. And that's what I'm going to mark on this line. And then just a little extra touch that i like to add for like full length tops that are fitted at this corner right here i'm going to come up by three quarters of an inch and then i'm just going to use that to make a very slightly curved hemline you can choose to do this or not this is just something that i like to do and so i'm just going to So you can see how my hemline looks now and then i'm going to connect this point to this point and then down to that one i'm also going to go ahead and at this sharp corner right here i'm just going to make it a curved i'm just going to create a curve just right there and yeah so this is what our top looks like then for the neckline i think maybe i could do like i could just make it slightly curved just come down here by one inch and then just curve that of course this is completely up to you this is just like my preference so i'm going to pin all this down and i'm going to cut it out so here's what our top looks like or well the back of the top and i realized that i left quite a bit of fabric here on this side 
where i like where the cutting stops so i'm just going to go ahead and just along that line all the way down from that end to the other end i'm just going to cut the part that is going to be like the ruffles along the neckline of the front of the top so i'm just going to do that just to make the most of this fabric because this is just about 1.5 meters and so that's not a lot of fabric so i'm just trying to be mindful in the way i cut this top to make sure i make the most of it so i'm going to do that right now i think in terms of the length i think i'm going to go for about three inches just because i'm going to be accounting for like hemming the top of it and then also going to attach it to the, the neckline of the top as well so i think three inches thick would be fine and then i'm just going to use the whole length at that end right there so yeah Here's the strip of fabric that we're using for like the ruffles. So this is about 42 inches long and it's like I said up just almost three inches wide. And so this is definitely going to be enough to go like because I'm just using it on the front. I'm not like doing ruffles on the back. So this should definitely be enough. I'm kind of worried that this fabric isn't going to be enough. I don't know. But anyway, this is the back piece that we just cut. And I'm going to use it to cut the front piece. But here's the thing. For like I really want this top to be fully lined. But I'm because of the fact that I feel like this fabric might not be enough. I don't know if we're going to end up lining the back. The fabric itself is pretty thick enough. The lining thing is just like for a neater finish. But we'll see how that goes. Anyway, the front piece, I definitely want it to have a lining. So the lining is just going to be like straight and plain and everything. And then the front part, that's the part that is not the lining, is the one that is going to have like all those ruffles you can see like going all down like the bodies of the top and everything so basically i'm just going to use this back piece that we've cut to cut the front lining so i'm going to cut it exactly the same way but the neckline i'm going to make like a sweetheart neckline so i think i'm going to come down a little bit maybe by an inch and three quarters or something and make that like sweetheart shape and then yeah that's basically the only difference between the front and the back so i'm just going to go ahead and do that right now and then um we'll get to cutting the actual front piece of the front so this is just the lining right now so let's go and here we have our piece so you can see i did cut like that sweetheart neckline shape for the front lining so it's sort of it's flat here and then it just goes up i just didn't want like a sharp i don't know center for it so but then it's up to you i freehanded this and you can use i guess you can use a french curve to make your lines more professional i don't know okay so now that i have the back piece and the lining piece for the front cut out i went ahead and traced the lining piece for the front onto this piece of paper right here just so i can get sort of like a pattern because if you look at the original top it does have like that gathering all down like the front and i really really love that so i'm going to be doing the slash and spread method so basically now that i have a replication of what the front is like which is the lining i'm going to take this and i'm going to just like um oh first of all because of the fact that i do have like i did put in an allowance for the darts and so of course the lining is going to have a dart the front um the front piece itself that's the one that goes over the lining is not going to have darts so i'm going to come in at the waist where i put in the dart allowance i'm going to come in and i'm going to take that one inch and then i'm just going to cut that out but other than that though well i could leave it this way even at that um yeah but i think it would be better if i just trim out that allowance for the dart so um the slash and spread method is pretty easy you have your pattern and you slash it and spread it out to create volume so i'm going to cut horizontally and i'm just going to cut like at different random points honestly um i don't want the, the gathering to be too much i'm just going for like just a very average like you can see that there are gathers all down the front but yeah um so i'm just going to slash it up and then i would i have my fabric folded over here so i would slash it up and then i would pin like the pieces all the way down just like that and then i would cut it out you know so um i'm going to go ahead right now and cut up the pieces of this and then i'll show you what that looks like so here is what my slash and spread looks like so i basically just cut it up i did not measure anything i drew lines on my pattern and then i just went ahead and cut so i ended up with 14 pieces and you can see they're not very like they're not exactly even but like each piece is less than two inches wide but then 
more than an inch wide maybe this one is about an inch okay somewhere between one and two inches and then the space in between i didn't measure that either i just spread them out but this is just a little under an inch for most of these spaces so this is what it looks like and i'm basically just going to cut and i'm going to still follow like the general shape of the top and just go that way and all the way around and then follow the hem follow the neckline and just everything so this just makes it so that this is a wider piece and when i'm attaching it to the lining i get to like make those gathers and then we have that like gathered effect all the way on it if you do have a body form is that what they call a body form or a mannequin to like do this on to like draft your patterns on then you don't need to you might not need to do this but i don't so this is this is my only option so yeah that's i'm going to cut this out and then um i'll see how much fabric we have left because we still need to cut the sleeves and then we still need to cut the lining for the back so let's see so it looks like we have enough fabric to do the lining for the back and do the sleeves as well so basically for the lining i'm just going to cut exactly what we cut as the back piece that was the very first piece that we cut as you can see here so i've placed it on top of my folded fabric and i'm going to pin it down and cut exactly the same thing and um after that i would cut the sleeves and then we'll get straight into sewing which is the fun part all right so for our final pieces the sleeves so i have this piece folded over here for one sleeve and then this piece folded over here for the second sleeve so we have just enough fabric which is great anyway um basically what i'm going to do is look at like the the widest parts like the most that i can get because i'm just trying to work with the fabric that i have but if you have enough fabric then you want to measure like how long you want your sleeves to be and these are puffy sleeves so if you go longer then you'll be able to like scrunch it up and get more volume so um i would typically recommend about 10 to 12 inches in length if you're really going for like a really puffy sleeve but what i have here is about nine inches which you know it's it's not bad so i'll just work with what i have and you also have to put into account the fact that you're going to be folding over the top to pass your elastic through there and then you're also going to do that on the bottom so um if you are going for say 12 inches then you want to add in some allowance for your elastic channel at the bottom and at the top of your sleeve now what i'm going to do because my widest point there is nine inches so the length I'm, for my sleeves that i'm working with is nine inches i'm going to measure nine inches in width and i'm going to cut that so i'm going to have a nine inch wide rectangle right for each of the sleeves so i'm going to do that here and i'm going to do the same thing here and then i'm going to use my body's pattern or like the, the pieces that i've cut for the body and i'm just going to place it right here at the outer side of the sleeve right and i'm just going to place it leaving about an inch here and then about an inch at the top as well so exactly like this and then using that as sort of like a guide i'm going to cut and that's going to be like the armhole area of my sleeves so yeah um i'm going to cut the sleeves right now and then i'll show you what the shape looks like when i'm done cutting so here are my sleeves stacked up on top of each other and i went for 15 inches wide also because that's how much fabric i have it's not going to be as big and as poofy as i would have i would have liked but um yeah this will work so um next up we're going to start sewing and the first thing that i want to do is to actually take like the lining pieces and the main pieces of the body of this top and first of all go to my ironing board and press them so that i can have that center front line um yeah so that's the first thing i'm going to do that line is going to come in handy okay so now that we have all the body pieces pressed so we have a nice like line down the front of all of them um I'm going to take this piece which is supposed to be like the ruffles that go all along the neckline of the front we're doing this for just the front but you could do it for the back as well but anyway i'm going to take this and i'm going to hem the top of it and the sides as well and then after hemming that i'm going to sew a basting stitch all along the part that is going to connect with the neckline so i'm going to sew the basting stitch and then i'm going to tug it to create those ruffles um so yeah that's the next thing that i'm going to do before we head on to actually start the body of the top so i have the ruffles done this is what it looks like it's hemmed and then i have my basting stitch down here that i used to make the ruffles i also use this um tiny safety pin just to like uh mark the center of this of the ruffles because the center is going to i want like the ruffles to be evenly spread out so i'm going to make sure that that area falls at the center of the neckline as well so now we can come to actually sewing the body of the top so starting with the back i'm just going to take it and then i'm going to spread 
it's open remember that i have my lining piece and then my main fabric piece as well so what you want to do is to open it up and then place your lining on top of your fabric and you just make sure then that you have it all aligned and everything and then when you lay it you lay it front sides facing each other so you can see the slightly shiny side of the fabric is the front of my fabric so i'm going to place it so that the front sides are facing each other like this and then i'm going to go ahead and sew along the neckline i'm also going to sew along the hem and um yeah so so along the neckline and the hem and i'm also going to top stitch the neckline just to make it really neat and really finished and everything that's what i'm going to do for these right now and we'll do the same thing for the front but because of these ruffles it's going to be a bit of a process so stay tuned okay so here is what the back looks like so this is like this is the, the wrong side of the fabric the inside and you can see where i top stitched the neck and everything and then this is the front so the neckline is finished the hem is finished and it's like it's all coming together so the next thing i'm going to do is actually to do the darts and i'm going to do the darts on the back here i'm going to do the darts on the back which is what you're looking at right now and then also on the lining piece for the front because remember what i said there's going to be darts on the lining for the front but on this part we don't see any darts in the original um, picture so the darts is just going to be on the lining so basically using this as our center line remember when we press this so that we could have that line down the center i'm just going to um on the waistline i'm just going to come in here by um four and a half inches so four and a half inches from my center front and then i'm going to mark that or like uh i'm just going to mark a, a line somewhere here and then on the waistline is usually the widest part of your dart so on that waistline I will go for an inch because I put in just an inch for my dart allowance. If you want your darts to be wider, then you definitely need more allowance while you're cutting your fabric. But I put in an inch, so an inch is what's going to be here. And it's going to taper up to nothing up here and then taper down as well. That's how you get that dart shape. Most of the time, honestly, I just freehand the darts and just sort of go with like the look that I'm going for, the fits that I'm going for, how long or how short the darts would be. You can... um try it out like experiment with it and see what works best for you so um i'm going to do my darts on the back and then on my lining piece i'm going to draw them on and then i'll show you what they look like so here's what the marking points for my darts look like at the midpoint here's that one inch that i told you about so this is the widest part of my darts so when i'm sewing it it's going to be folded over right and then hold on so it's basically going to be folded over like this and then i'm going to start here and then come and then taper out like this and then do the same thing down and then like just come out like that and yeah so i've marked the lats on the back and the front as well so i'm just going to sew them down right now and then we would work on the ruffles for the front which i'm really excited about so yeah and here's what the back looks like with the darts so you can see it just creates like a really nice shape and it cinches it in at the waist just a bit more um yeah and that's the lining of the front now we're actually going to get started on this so i'm going to unpin all of these um pattern papers and then i'm going to sew a straight stitch which is going to be a basting stitch actually down the center front and this is where this line that we pressed here comes in handy so i'm just going to follow that line and sew that basting stitch from the top all the way down there and then i'm going to use that kind of like what we did with the ruffles i'm going to use that to gently tug and create that like gathering effect so after doing the basting stitch down the center front of my front here and then i've sort of gathered it up a bit i've laid it on the lining piece and i pinned it along the armhole and the neckline just up here i'm also going to go ahead and pin this lower part down because i'm going to do what we did for this one which is sewing the bottom and the neckline to just make sure like we do the finishing on those ends first of all so we're going to do that for this one before um going in with the straight stitch to secure this center front down like that so i just realized that i made a really big mistake actually an omission but like basically these ruffles that are supposed to go along the neckline of the front i was supposed to sew that in like when i was sewing the neckline and i didn't so i'm going to have to like undo all of this here and then redo it with the ruffles in place so i'm basically going to just sandwich this in between the lining and the main fabric piece and then just do that all over again but it's fine that i cut it like before i went ahead to attach the sides and everything so i'm just going to do that straight up and then um before coming back to sew this center front down to the lining piece so yeah so our ruffles are in 
this is what it looks like it's so cute i really love it so um next up is going to be the straight stitch that basically holds down these gathers to the lining piece of the um of the front so i'm going to do that so I'm, i already put some pins in place just to hold it down and then i'm just going to use a straight stitch to go all the way from the top to the bottom and then i'm also going to go ahead after doing that i'm also going to go ahead and do something similar on both sides as well just because i want it all like i want to hold it down both the front and the lining pieces i want to hold them down together so that it would be like that's just going to help make it easier when i'm joining the front and back pieces and sleeves and all of that together so i'm going to do this one first and then i think i'll probably press it just to help make it easier on like in attaching the sides and then i would do the same straight stitches down the two sides as well and here's the top so i've sewn down the sides and then i did the center front so you can see like all of the gathers or pleats or whatever you want to call them looks really good right now and we're getting closer to the end of this so i'm so excited so i'm going to take the back piece and i'm just going to place it over like this and of course right sides of the fabric facing each other and then what i'm going to do is to sew down one side and i'm actually going to leave the other side open because that's where the zipper is going to go so i'm putting the zipper underneath the left side of my top because i'm right-handed so like it'll be easier for me to reach my right hand to undo and redo the zipper on that left side so if you are left-handed then you want to put your zipper underneath the right side and um yeah so basically um but we're not putting the zipper right now what i'm going to do is close one side which is the right side and then um i'm just also going to go ahead and start with the sleeves right so let's just put this aside and then what we're going to do is to first of all create the channels for the elastic so we're using the half inch elastic band and so the the channel doesn't need to be so big so all i'm going to do is to fold over twice just to um, make sure that we have a clean finish and all the raw edges are not visible so i'm going to fold it over like this and then like this and then sew right on the edge of that and i'm going to go all around the um um bottom hem and also all around the top and yeah so i'm going to do that pass the elastic through and i will show you what that looks like and what next steps we're going to take after that so yeah and here's what our top looks like so you can see like it clearly looks like a top right now really happy about this so um here's what the sleeves look like so i have pins holding down the elastic at like all the ends just to make sure it doesn't get like sucked into the channel all right so you want to make sure that there's a tiny bit of it like sticking out so that when you sew this down your stitches would hold the elastic in place so I have that done for the two sleeves and what i'm going to do is to sew this place closed and then attach it to my armhole right there and then um chances are your armhole on your sleeve would be a bit bigger or wider than what you have on the body of your top which is fine because the plan is to kind of like gather it up gather up your sleeve fabric as you attach it here it just adds to the volume and i think that's going to help my case even more because my fabric wasn't so much so i couldn't make the sleeves as big and puffy as i'd have liked so this is great and um yeah so after attaching the sleeves on this end you're also just going to have to be careful while attaching the sleeve because as you can see this side is still open because that's where the zip is going to go so i'm basically just going to turn it inside out and then pin these two places together to make sure that i have like to make sure i take in the same amount which is about an inch as you can see make sure i have that same um amount of fabric going in here and attach my sleeve and then the last step would be to insert my or to um install my zipper and what you're going to do is to actually make sure it's upside down because it zips like this way so this part of the zipper is going to be down here and yeah so install it upside down and then i'm just going to cut off all of the excess because this is obviously longer than that side of my top so i'm going to cut off the excess and then that's basically going to be it honestly this was fun i will finish this up and then show you what the finished um top looks like Here's what our top looks like all finished so i ended up putting matching buttons all down the center up front um i gave like 2.5 inches space between each of them and i have five of them here and yeah it's basically done oh my goodness i really love it i really really love it so here's where the zipper is and yeah 